Hello everyone, my name is Sagar Joshi and I work with Microsoft as a partner technology strategist. You can get in touch with me using the Twitter and LinkedIn information you see on the screen. Today's topic is KEDA, an acronym for Kubernetes Event Driven Auto Scaling. We'll first start by looking at some of the challenges which developers experience, how KEDA solves it. We'll look at the KEDA community and architecture and end with a demo. All right. Let's get started. If you are a developer working with Kubernetes to host your applications, you might be aware of a concept called as HPA. HPA means Horizontal Pod Autoscaler. It's a component of Kubernetes which helps you to scale your pods versus the CPU or memory metrics. But as we move into the modern world of microservices and event-driven architectures, our scaling needs are also changing. You might need to scale your applications based on some custom events or messages uh, which are there in your application. Well, you can solve that problem possibly writing your own frameworks, operators or custom resources. That could sometimes be time consuming or difficult to maintain in the long run. Hence, in order to drive developer productivity and agility in designing robust systems, KEDA solves this problem for you. KEDA helps you to scale your applications basis the events or messages in your application. Let's look at some of the features of KEDA. It is very relevant in an event-driven architecture. KEDA helps you to implement auto-scaling easily. We have a lot of scalers, for example, from telemetry systems, database systems, messaging systems, which are used across the industry. You can scale jobs as well as pods using KEDA. KEDA is also vendor agnostic. Whether you are running your Kubernetes cluster on-premises on your laptop or on the cloud, KEDA will work just fine. If you are working with Microsoft Azure Functions, which run on the cloud, on the edge or on on-premises, you can use KEDA to scale Azure Functions as well. Again, the value proposition of KEDA is helping you easily implement auto-scaling for your applications. Let's look at some of the community work uh, around KEDA. KEDA is now a CNCF sandbox project, which is Cloud Native Computing Foundation. It was originally developed and now maintained by Microsoft, Red Hat, and many other companies who are contributing to the open source ecosystem. If you want to get involved, just log into keda.sh slash community. Now let's quickly look at the KEDA architecture. KEDA sits between the horizontal pod autoscaler and the event trigger source. Now this could be a messaging system like Kafka, RabbitMQ or Azure Service Bus which generates messages. And it then, is, it then feeds that information to the horizontal pod autoscaler which then initiates scale action for your pods. This is just a simple diagram explaining where does KEDA sit inside your Kubernetes cluster. Just to take an example of some of the scalers which are available and very prominent softwares in the industry which are used for messaging or eventing architectures. Some of the examples are Apache Kafka, Azure Service Bus, Azure Event Hubs, Redis, MySQL databases and many others from the other cloud providers and industry. What are some of the use cases that you can use KEDA in? Number one, pod auto-scaling or nodes. So basically, you can scale your application pods based on the number of events or messages that are there in the system. Just scaling by CPU or memory might not be sufficient. KEDA can also be used to implement serverless workloads in Kubernetes. I highly recommend you read about a concept called as virtual kubelet if you are not done so already. An example of virtual kubelet you can find on, for example, in one of the cloud environments is, is a virtual node in Azure Kubernetes service. So you can scale from 0 to n pods or shrink in from n to 0 pods on a virtual kubelet which basically is truly serverless. And this in combination with the cloud environment can really help you to implement truly serverless workloads using Kubernetes. All right. Let's jump right into the demo. We're going to use a Azure Service Bus as the event source. 
and then we're going to push some messages into the queue and scale the number of pods basis the number of events which are there in the queue and if it crosses certain threshold we're going to keep adding pods right so let's jump right in here you see is my console I have a Kubernetes cluster running on the cloud and I can show you the number of nodes which I have so I can just say kubectl get nodes I have two nodes currently which are running now let's see uh, if I have any pods running so I'll say kubectl get pods and I basically have a namespace for this I only have one pod which is a web pod and if I want to see the deployments of pods the order processor pod. So basically this sample uh, processes orders by picking up messages from the queue. And currently there are no orders, hence none of the pods are running, which is zero. And this is a speciality of Keda, from zero to N or zero to one and back to zero, which cannot be implemented by using a simple HPA. Now let's try to see and push some messages and uh, we will be able to experience that the pods or the number of pods are getting added to the deployment as the number of messages in the queue scale up, right? So let me add a watch on the number of pods here. All right, and let me sort of zoom in a little bit so that we are able to precisely see what's exactly happening. Shoot, shoot here, get pods. Awesome. Now I'm going to start pumping messages to the queue and we'll see the number of pods go up. All right. So let me start my VS code. And I'm going to just start pushing messages to the queue. But before that, let me sh show you a small visualization which can help you to understand how many pods are there. All right. So let me start my application which is actually responsible for pushing messages to the queue. I'm just going to say .NET run. It's a .NET code application. To ask me how many messages do I want to really push. To 100. Fine. And as you see, the number of messages are going up right now. And on the left hand side, you'll be able to see that the pods will also be starting to create. And then Keda will keep adding pods until the orders uh, is below the threshold number. Now if you see, pods are getting created, right? The order processing pods, which were zero, now we are adding more pods into the deployments. And if you see, different pods are getting created within the cluster. Right? And then if we just pause it and see, instead of the watch, now we have almost one, two, three, four pods running. And if you just keep doing this, you'll probably see more pods as well, right? So you are able to scale in the matter of seconds until the queue length go, drops below the threshold. Pods will also come down to zero if there are no more messages left in the queue. And this is how you can implement auto scaling in response to the number of messages arriving in the queue. Now just look, let's look at a sample YAML file, which I used to deploy the uh, Keda scaling. This says I'm using the Azure Service Bus as a trigger source for my messages. I'm monitoring the queue name called orders and the threshold is five, which basically means if there are more than five messages in the queue, start adding pods to the deployment. And then if you see, I'm configuring what is the maximum number of replicas of the pods that I can add. By default, the minimum replicas is zero. And I'll just, I'll just use kubectl apply for applying this configuration to my pods or to my deployments. Now, as you see, the order queue has now come down to zero because the increase in pods has led to higher processing throughput. Now, if you see here, we can just say again, how many pods are there? And we see almost we have reached the capacity. We can also go and check the deployments or, you know, what is the number of pods in the deployment, we have reached the maximum capacity of 10. Now these 10 pods are actually processing the workload and then we'll be able to see that it also goes down to zero after the application 
has processed all the messages. So if we wait for some more time, we will see that the number of pods will drop down to zero again as Keda starts removing those from the uh, deployments. All right, so that was the demo and I highly encourage you to go and explore all the samples of Keda on github.com slash Keda core slash samples. Please feel free to reach out to me in case you have any questions or concerns and I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you for being a great audience and I hope you have a great conference ahead. Thank you very much.